Hi, my name is Liesl Peterson Erb and I'm a wildlife ecologist at the University of Colorado at Boulder. As a wildlife ecologist, I study animals. I study where they live and why they live in certain places and not others. The animal I choose to study for my research is called the American pika. It's a small rabbit relative that lives in the mountains of the western U.S. and Canada. And I started to study them because some friends of mine had been researching them in the Great Basin. The Great Basin is a region that's mostly Nevada, part of California, Oregon, and Idaho. And they had been monitoring populations for about a decade and realized that several populations had totally disappeared, or what we call were extirpated. Because those populations were disappearing, it started to make all of us in the research community worried about pikas all throughout the western U.S. So for my research, I set out to figure out if pikas were disappearing in the southern Rocky Mountains. That means I went to places all throughout northern New Mexico, Colorado, and southern Wyoming to figure out if pikas were where they used to be. I wanted to know if they were where they used to be, and if they were disappearing, I needed to know why. So first of all, I did expect some of them to have disappeared, because we knew that some had disappeared in other parts of the range over in the Great Basin. And I also had some suspicions as to why they might have disappeared from certain places and not others. This was based on some things we know about pikas. The first thing is they're really sensitive to climate, to different temperatures. They don't like really hot summer temperatures. So I thought the sites that had really high summer temperatures might have lost their pikas. They also actually don't like cold temperatures, which is kind of weird for a, a mountain animal, but in the winter, they're used to always having a blanket of snowpack covering them up. So without that snowpack, I thought they might get too cold in the winter and might disappear for that reason. So I thought sites without snow, without enough snowpack, would lose their pikas too. We also had a few ideas about the habitat where pikas lived and thought that some features of that habitat may make it better for pikas or worse. One of the things was the rock that they live in. Pikas all live in what we call talus slopes or broken rock slopes. And those broken rock slopes can be really different depending on where you are. Some of them have pretty small rocks and some have bigger rocks. In some of them, the, the spaces between the rocks goes down really, really deep. and other places, it's really shallow. We thought places with bigger rocks or deeper talus might provide better shelter for pikas from climate, extreme climate, like those summer high temperatures. Also, pikas are herbivores. That means they eat plants. So we thought there might be some aspects of the plant communities at different sites that would affect whether or not pikas could live there. We wanted to look at whether or not there were more wildflowers versus grasses versus trees at places and see if any of those made a difference in where pikas could live. So as you can imagine, to figure all this out, I had to go to the field and I had to collect a lot of data in the field. So I'm going to head out to a field site right now and I'd love for you to come on with me. And while we're going, I want you to think about the kind of data I'm going to need to collect to answer the questions that I have about pikas. All right, we made it to my field site and it's time to collect some data. Now, what data do I exactly need? Well, the first most obvious thing is whether or not pikas are here. Often, I also wanna know how many pikas are here. Once I collect that information, I also need all that information about the site itself. I wanna know about the climate, what the temperature and precipitation is here. I wanna know things about the rocks that the pikas live in, and I wanna know things about the vegetation or the plants that they eat. So how do I collect that data? Well, to collect information about whether or not pikas are here, I search for signs of them. Now the most obvious sign is seeing one itself, but that doesn't always happen, right? But sometimes we see them or we hear them calling. They have a really distinctive call. If we don't see them or hear them though, there are some indirect ways we can know pikas are here. One of the best indirect signs we can use for pikas is their hay piles. Now a hay pile is basically a pika's pantry. Because they don't hibernate, they're awake all winter, they collect plants and shove them under the rocks that they can feed off of all winter long. Now if the plants that are in those hay piles are green, we know they must have picked them this year and we can know that a pika is in residence at that territory. 
Similarly, we can sometimes see whether or not a pike has been, well, pooping. We can know pikas leave scat or poop near their hay piles often, and we can open up that scat and figure out if it's fresh. That can be a little bit tricky, so the hay piles or seeing a pika is the best way to go, but we use all those signs to figure out if pikas are out of sight. To figure out how many pikas are at a site is a little bit trickier. We have to be a little more precise. To do that, we need to walk a thing called a transect. We walk lines that go across the talus slope. And as we walk, we look for signs of pikas. That way we can know exactly how much area we saw pika sign in, and we can multiply that out to figure out how many pikas are probably in the whole area. That transect walking is a good way to look for other habitat signs too, especially vegetation. As you can imagine, there are plants everywhere and I can't count every one. What I can do is when I'm walking a transect, every meter, figure out what plant is at that meter. I can record those plants and figure out what the dominant plant is here and if there are some species that are really missing or some that are taking over the area. As I'm walking those transects, I'm also looking for pika hay piles, as I said, not only to document whether or not pikas are here, but a pika hay pile is a really great place to find out what the climate a pika is experiencing. The reason for that is a pika has chosen to live in a, under a specific rock. That's probably for a reason. So if I can put something under that rock to tell me what the temperature and precipitation is, it'll tell me what is best for that pika. The way I do that is using a climate data logger. It's a basically a little computer that runs off a battery that takes a temperature reading every 30 minutes for an entire year. So I can put it under a rock, leave it there, and come back a year later and it will tell me everything the pika experienced while I was away. Now, you might think that that's mostly just for temperature, but it actually tells me something about snowpack too. Because as I said, snowpack acts a lot like an insulating blanket for pikas. When there's no snowpack, temperatures go up and during the day and down at night, and up during the day and down at night. When there's snowpack, it levels off and the temperature really doesn't change more than in a, a degree or so every day. So I can tell whether or not there was snowpack and for how long at every pika's hay pile where I put a data logger, which is pretty cool. The final thing I look for when I'm walking my transects is I'm looking and scouting out the whole site to figure out where the biggest rocks are. I also want to figure out where the deepest talus is. Once I've found where the deepest talus and the biggest rocks are, I measure those biggest rocks and how deep it is to figure out if those are able to provide shelter for pikas from those extreme temperatures I talked about earlier. In my surveys, I've found that pikas are in a lot of the places where they used to be, which is great news for pikas. They have disappeared from a few places though. And those places aren't random. There are some things they all have in common. It turns out those places tend to be pretty dry. They don't get a lot of rain or snowpack. They also tend to be pretty hot in the summer, which we know pikas don't like. The other thing we found that's particularly important for both whether or not pikas are here and how many there are is how good the, the plants are for pikas. It turns out some plants have more nutrition for pikas than others. Things like wildflowers have a lot more nutrition in them than something like a grass. And it turns out pikas have disappeared from some of those places that don't have as many wildflowers and are more dominated by grasses. I've spent the last several years going to sites just like this, documenting whether or not pikas are there, if they're there, how many there are, and documenting things about their environment, the climate, and plants and rocks. That data is available online for you guys to explore. And if you're wondering what I'm up to now, follow me on my blog to keep track of me as I go to new sites.